This is your weekly update for the USMNT players abroad from February 8th to February 15th. And before I start, I want to say thank you to everyone that has been supporting this series by hitting the like button, commenting, sharing on Reddit, Facebook. Thank you very much. You guys have been helping the series grow so much and look how far we've come so far. And it's all thanks to you guys. If no one watches the content, we're no good. So I want to thank you all very much for that. Don't forget that tomorrow we do have an interview with Kick Peary here in the channel, the Dutch American. So make sure to show some love to Kick Peary and comment down below. Not today. Well, today comment too, but at the video tomorrow for him to join the USMNT. Let's get him. Let's let's do the job that Bearhalter hasn't done so far. But anyhow, let's just go right to the episode. Thank you very much, guys. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. If you're old here, also hit the like button. Let's run the episode now. All right, so let's start the transfer updates. And there's a couple transfer rumors going on that I need to talk about. And the first one being Justin Che. Justin Che from the FC Dallas Academy signed with Bayern Munich on a loan with the option to buy. It's something similar to Chris Richards. Justin Che already arrived at Munich at, Bay at Bayern and we'll see if he's gonna stay. He's gonna be on a loan to the end of the season. He's only 17, I believe right now. The second update is CJ Dos Santos, a player we interviewed here on the channel. I'm putting the interview on the description. He might be joining Burnley and going to the Premier League to be a backup goalkeeper. That is very interesting and very intriguing. It's actually pretty cool that we'll have another goalkeeper at the Premier League. Last but not least, Jesse Marsh. Yes, we have an update on Jesse Marsh. Jesse Marsh could be heading to Gladbach at the Bundesliga next season as their current manager, Rose, will be heading to Dortmund after this season. He's heavily linked and he could be going to Bundesliga and that is big for Jesse Marsh and for the US Men's National Team too. All right, and Matthew Hoppe. Apparently, Manchester United, Manchester City, Liverpool, and Tottenham are keeping an eye on the young American to maybe possibly get a transfer. He just renewed his contract with Schalke so they would have to pay a transfer clause. But that'd be pretty good for Hoppy if there's big teams like that after him. That's good news for the Americans. Just a quick transfer rumor I want to update you guys on. Before we head to the players, I just wanted to update you guys that ESPN Plus has added the Belgium League to their package. And you could have watched it already this weekend. And no, this video is not sponsored by ESPN or ESPN Plus. I just want to let you guys know it just made my life a lot easier because now I can actually scout the players instead of looking at highlights. So now let's go on the updates on the players, starting with Christian Pulisic. On Thursday, Chelsea played Barnsley for the FA Cup and Pulisic started and was subbed off at the 80th minute at their 1-0 victory. Honestly, this was one of the worst performances for Chelsea that Pulisic has ever had. And I know some people blame the pitch, but I just think that's an excuse. And now on Monday, Chelsea played Newcastle and defeated them 2-0. Christian Pulisic stayed at the bench the entire match. But don't worry, don't panic. Christian Pulisic has form and confidence problems. He'll pick it back up. He's still a fantastic winger. Don't panic. It's not the right time to panic, USMNT fans. Next player. All right, guys, so now Weston McKinney. On Wednesday, Weston McKinney started off at the bench for Juventus at their 0-0 draw of Inter Milan. McKinney came in the 63rd minute and helped Juve qualify as they had won the first leg 2-1. On Saturday, Weston McKinney started off at the bench again for Juventus at their 1-0 loss to Napoli. He was being rested by Pirlo, but due to Juventus being behind on the scoreboard, he did put Weston McKinney halfway through the second half. However, he did not have a great game. L3 fans were very happy because Weston McKinney didn't have a good game and Lozano won this matchup. But Lozano didn't have a great game either as he was rolling around on the floor even more than the ball itself. Weston McKinney is expected to start for Juventus on the Champions League midweek. All right, before I do Gio Reyna, I want to say thank you to Josh from JJDTV once again for being our scout when it comes to Gio Reyna. So what Josh told us was Gio Reyna played more of a central attacking midfielder role. He did a little better, but he's clearly lacking confidence. However, he was also subbed in the 59th minute, even though he wasn't having that bad of a game. And Dortmund ended up tying Hoffenheim this week in 2-2 as Dortmund continues to struggle. It's also very important to point out that if Dortmund does miss out on the Champions League, Gio Reyna could be sold and go elsewhere. And we'll make a video about that saying where he could go and analyze why he would go to certain teams and if it'll be good for him or not. We'll release that later this week. All right, now, Serginho Des from Barcelona. On Wednesday, Des was not even part of the roster that faced Sevilla at Barcelona's 2-0 loss. It was most likely due to the same muscle injury that was bugging him for a while. Now, on Saturday, the good news was that Des was healthy. He started off at the bench for Barcelona at their 5-1 win over Alaves. He came into the game at the 72nd minute when the game was still 2-1. Hopefully, Sergio Des does start for Barcelona at their PSG matchup, but that will depend if Koeman wants to go for a more offensive lineup or a more defensive one by putting Mingueza. Okay, now Tyler Adams from RB Leipzig. On Friday, Tyler Adams started off at the bench for RB Leipzig at their 2-1 win over Augsburg. Adams came in the 64th minute and had a solid performance and ended up with a yellow card and 23 touches. 
And also, happy birthday to Tyler Adams. He turned 22 this Sunday, so happy birthday to the Young American Abroad. All right, now let's go to the goalkeepers. And the only goalkeeper I want to talk about is Zach Steffen. He was the only one that had any meaningful minutes this week abroad. On Wednesday, Zach Steffen started and played a full 90 minutes for Manchester City at their 3-1 win over Swansea for the FA Cup. Swansea did not really test Stefan that he had zero saves in the game. He does continue to show improvement of his feet, getting a lot of touches throughout the game. Now on the weekend, Manchester City faced the Tottenham and Stefan was back at the bench for the full 90 minutes. Okay, now we're moving forward to the center back position. And we're going to start with John Brooks from Wolfsburg. On Sunday, Brooks started for Wolfsburg at their 0-0 draw versus Gladbach for the Bundesliga. Brooks played a full 90 minutes, had a solid performance and got a yellow card. That is his sixth straight clean sheet in a row for John Brooks and Wolfsburg. That is pretty impressive. Now, Chris Richard. On Saturday, Chris Richard stayed a full 90 minutes for Hoffenheim at the bench at their 2-2 draw with Dortmund. But wait, don't panic. The reason he was at the bench was because apparently he picked up a slight injury at practice on Friday, so he should be back at the starting lineup next week for sure. All right, now Eric Palmer Brown. On Wednesday, Palmer Brown started and played a full 90 minutes for Austria Wing at their 3-1 loss to RB Salzburg. He had an okay defensive game, but his passing was way off. He only hit 67% of them, which seems like he does struggle with passes when it comes to high-pressing teams like RB Salzburg. Now on Sunday, he started again for Austria Wing at their 1-0 win over Hartberg, and he played a full 90 minutes and got a yellow card. Okay, now Matt Miazga from Underlesch. On Thursday, Miazga was rested for Underlesch at their 5-0 win for the Belgian Cup over Union Saint. Now on Sunday, Miazga started and played a full 90 minutes for Anderlecht at their 0-0 tie with Circle Bruges. Another clean sheet for Miazga as he continues to have a very strong season at Belgium. Okay, now Kick Piri. On Sunday, Kick started and played a full 90 minutes at 20's 2-0 win over Vitezzi. Kick had a great game and he was the second highest rated player in the field. Yes, and we do have an interview with him tomorrow. Let's please comment at that video and get him to join the USMNT. I'm doing my job and I need your help. And we need Greg Berhalter to call him up too. Now Mark McKenzie from Genk. On Wednesday, Mark McKenzie started and played a full 90 minutes for Genk at their 1-0 win over STVV for the Belgium Cup. He had a solid performance and they had a clean sheet. Carter Vickers from Bournemouth. On Tuesday, Carter Vickers started and played a full 90 minutes for Bournemouth at their 2-0 win over Burnley at the FA Cup. Now on Saturday, he also started and played a full 90 minutes for Bournemouth at their 0-0 draw with Northingham Forest for the English Championship. That is two clean sheets this week, so pretty good for the young American. Now, let's move on to the fullbacks. Okay, so Anthony Robinson, he stayed the full 90 minutes at the bench for Fulham at their 2-0 win over Everton this week. Now, they did change the formation to a 4-4-2, so it could be that Parker, their manager, just wanted a more defensive left back, while Robinson's not that good on defense. He's more of an offensive one. So it's okay. Let's see if he'll start next week. I expect him to be back at the starting lineup very soon. Okay, now Reggie Cannon from Boa Vista at Liga NOS. On Tuesday, Reggie Cannon stayed at the bench for the full 90 minutes at their 1-0 loss to Nacional for the Portuguese League. Now on Saturday, Reggie Cannon started and played a full 90 minutes for Boa Vista at their 2-2 tie with Porto. It was a great result and a solid performance from Reggie Cannon as he had 5 interceptions, 46 touches, and was amazing on the defensive end. Congratulations to Reggie Cannon. Okay, now Matthew Olosunde. Olosunde started on Tuesday for Waterham on their 2-1 loss to Cardiff. Olosunde was subbed off at the 71st minute. His weekend game was canceled, so that was the only game he played last week. Okay, now Shaquille Moore. Moore played a full 90 minutes on Saturday for Tenerife at their 1-0 win over Ponferradina. Okay, now quick talk about Brian Reynolds. He didn't play at for Roma. He wasn't registered on the Europa League. However, he did have his first practice session this week. Hopefully, he gets some cup minutes if Roma still in. I do need to research on that. And if they do play in the Serie A and give him some minutes there too, that would be pretty good. Last but not least for the fullbacks, DeAndre Yedlin. On Wednesday, Yedlin started and played a full 90 minutes for Galatasaray at their 3-2 loss to Alanyaspor at the Turkish Cup. On Sunday, Galatasaray faced Kasim Pasa for the Turkish League and Yedlin started off at the bench and came in the 77th minute at their 2-1 victory. Okay, now we're moving a little forward now with the midfielders and I'm going to start with Yunus Musa. On Sunday, Valencia faced Real Madrid for La Liga and Yunus Musa started off at the bench at Valencia's 2-0 loss. Valencia was down 2-0 at halftime, and that is when Musa came into the game for Valencia, trying to make a push, trying to make a comeback in the game. He didn't do that well, but neither did the entire Valencia team at this 2-0 loss to Real Madrid. Okay, and now let's go to Chris Durkin. On Wednesday, Chris Durkin started for STVV and played a full 90 minutes as a right back at their 1-0 loss to Genk for the Belgium Cup. On Saturday, he started once again, played a full 90 minutes again, now this time as a holding midfielder at their 2-1 loss to Zulte for the Belgium League. Okay, and Johnny Cardoso. 
Johnny Soccer. Internacional played sport on Wednesday and lost 2-1 man down. Cardoso stayed at the bench for the full 90 minutes. Now on Sunday, Internacional was able to defeat Vasco 2-0 and Johnny Cardoso started off at the bench and came in the 90th minute. So next Sunday, Internacional faces Flamengo as they do lead the league right now by one point. If they defeat Flamengo with two matches left, they are the Brazilian champions and Johnny Cardoso will be the first ever American to win the Brazilian league. If you guys want us to do a live watch along for that game, Internacional and Flamengo, let us know at the comment section down below. If we have enough requests, we'll do it. That way we can keep you guys updated on Johnny Cardoso as I do know that it's very hard to follow through with the Brazilian league. All right, so Brandon Arison. Arison started for RB Salzburg on Wednesday at their 3-1 win over Austria win. Brendan had a fantastic game, scored a goal, two big chances created, 60 touches, absolutely fantastic. He was subbed off at the 84th minute, and he was also named Man of the Match. Congratulations, Brendan. On Saturday, Brendan Harrison started off at the bench for RB Salzburg at their 4-2 win over Watens. And he came in the last 21 minutes. He did not have the best performance. However, he did get not get many touches in the game. Also, we do have the okay from Brendan already to have the interview with him on the channel. We're just waiting for him to schedule. Hopefully, we can get an interview with him done as soon as possible. I hope so within the next month. Okay, now Taylor Booth. Booth made his debut for Poulton at the Austrian League on Sunday at their 1-1 tie with Reed. He was named man at the match, got an assist, and played a full 90 minutes. The young American is on loan from Bayern Munich. Okay, now Julian Green. On Saturday, we had a big match for the Bundesliga 2, Hamburg versus Firth. Green started and played pretty much a full 90 minutes as he was subbed off at the 92nd minute at the 0-0 draw. Hamburg completely dominated and Green had a... Eh, performance didn't do too much. Okay, now Luca De La Torre. De La Torre on Saturday started and played a full 90 minutes for Heracles after 2-0 loss to Ajax. For this game, he played more as a right winger and there's not much more to talk about for this game at least. All right, we're hitting the very end of the video. Now I'm going to talk about the forwards. I'm going to start Timothy Weah. But before I get to that, please hit the like button as it does help other USMNT fans find us. All right, now let's start with Timothy Weah. On Wednesday, Tim Weah started for Lille at the French Cup match versus Dijon. Lille won 1-0 and Weah was subbed off at the 83rd minute. Now on Sunday, Weah was back at the bench for Lille at their 0-0 draw with Brest for the League 1 matchup. Weah came into the game at the 61st minute and Lille continues to lead League 1 ahead of PSG. Okay, Matthew Hoppy from Schalke. Hoppy started for Schalke this Saturday and played a full 90 minutes at their 0-0 draw with Union Berlin. He did show some flashes of talent throughout the game, but he didn't score, obviously, as the game was 0-0. Matthew Hoppy was also voted Rookie of the Month in the Bundesliga, so congratulations, Matthew Hoppy. Okay, now let's talk about Daryl DK. He finally made his debut for Barnsley. On Thursday, DK made his debut for Barnsley at their 1-0 loss to Chelsea for the FA Cup. DK did come in the 59th minute and had a slightly below average game. Now on Sunday, Daryl DK started for Barnsley at their 2-0 win over Brentford for the championship. DK was subbed off at the 56th minute as he was having an okay game. He lost the possession nine times. He didn't complete more than 45% of his passes. And there was this play that they said he should have gotten an assist. But in my opinion, if you guys look at that replay, to me, he was shooting on goal and the ball deflected on the defender. And then they ended up scoring a goal. So I think he did okay. We do need to manage our expectations on DK. He was very physical in the game. That was pretty good. But when it comes to his technical ability and positioning, eh, it's not the best right now. He did play a little wide in this game, which is not the best. Played more towards the right side of the field. I'd rather see him as a center forward. But we'll keep tracking DK, scouting him, and see how he performs at the championship. Okay, quick update on Sebastian Soto. He continues to not play for Norwich. He has been part of their U23 squad. Hopefully, he gets minutes with the senior squad very soon. All right, now, Nicolas Joachini. Joachini. <laughs> I know you guys love when I say it wrong. Let's go to him. So, he started for Cain on Wednesday, and they played PSG for the French Cup, which they ended up losing 1-0, and he was subbed off at the 61st minute with a very average performance. On Saturday, he started off at the bench for Cain at their 1-0 win over New York for the French second division. He came into the game in the 72nd minute when the game was still 0-0. All right, moving to Josh Sargent from Werder Bremen now. Sargent started for Werder Bremen this Saturday at their 0-0 draw with Freiburg. Sargent had a pretty bad game to be honest and ended up leaving the match at the 67th minute with a head injury. Sargent has to do better in the field, but right now let's just hope he's healthy, that there's no concussion, nothing. Let's just hope he's fine. But he has to perform better in the field. That was pretty bad. Now, Thiasson Siabaccio. I hope I said his name right, the French-American. On Wednesday, Siabaccio started for Young boys and he scored their winning goal at their 1-0 victory over Lausanne and then he was subbed off at the 80th minute. Good match by the, the French American. Now on Sunday he started off at the bench for young boys at their matchup against Lugano and he came into the game at the 68th minute at their 3-1 victory. Okay now I'm going to give you guys updates on the Swansea boys Jordan Morris and Paul Ariola. Swansea played Man City on Wednesday for the FA Cup and lost 3-1. Jordan Morris started and was subbed off at the 66th minute had an okay game. While Ariola started off at the bench, he came in the 65th minute, also didn't have that much of a game. 
The thing is, Manchester City completely dominated the game, so the Americans didn't really touch the ball as much. They didn't even play as much. Manchester City was completely dominating Swansea. Their weekend game was canceled, so they didn't play over the weekend. Nothing to talk about there. Now, Tyler Boyd. On Thursday, Tyler Boyd was not even part of the roster at the match against Kayaspor for the Turkish Cup. Before I go to the quick update on the players that didn't play this week, just to give you guys, I just wanted to say a lot of the Americans have been struggling lately, but don't worry. It's perfectly normal. Most of our players are U23, U20 players. They're very young. So you should expect inconsistency. That is perfectly fine, perfectly normal, including Christian Pulisic, which is a very young player. All right, so here's a list of inactive players that didn't play this week that we usually update you guys, but there's nothing to talk about this week. And they are Ethan Horvath, CJ Dos Santos, Joe Scali, Alex Mithgen, Polarin Balagun, Henry Wingo, Conrad De La Fuente, Uli Lanes, Owen Otasawi, Haji Wright, and Emmanuel Sabi. They didn't have any impactful games or didn't play at all this week. That's why we're not updating you guys. So this is the update for this week. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for continuing to support the series. And expect a lot of collabs with 11 Yanks too. Don't forget that. They're going to be great videos. Thank you all very much for watching. Have a great day.